Hi, I'm Daryl Burnett with the Innovative Farmers of Ontario. We're leaving behind more than just tire tracks. Compaction means leaving 20% of yields behind. With Matthias Stettler from Switzerland, here in September we tested the soil stress from dozens of different pieces of equipment and tires with our Compaction Action event. Matthias Stettler is a researcher and professor from Bern University in Switzerland. Here are just a few highlights from his session with us. And uh, what I usually do is display these this two CT scans. So these are computer tomography uh, scans of soil samples. So on the left side you can see uh, intact a healthy soil sample and on the right you can see a soil sample after passing with a big uh, sugar beet harvester. And everything in soil is, is happening in this pore space, so nutrient exchange, water circulation, aeration. Now the problem is compaction weakens all of this soil functions. But you can roughly say you will lose about 20% of yield if you have repeated minor topsoil compaction. The problem is, as a farmer, you won't see this loss. You won't realize. That's uh, the difficult thing about uh, subsoil compaction. So if we look at the wheel loads, the development of the wheel loads, the red line. We started around two tons per wheel in 1960, and now we, we go up to 10 tons and even more than 10 tons per wheel. It's not per axle, it's per wheel. Now, I hear a lot of farmers say, well, that's not that a problem. The tire dimension went up the same way. So we had the same evolution in tires. And they are correct if we are regarding tire volume. We have very big tires nowadays, but the problem is the contact between tire and soil is just a, an area, it's not the volume. So the development of the contact area is only a quadratic function. Fifty years ago the mean ground pressure was about 7.5 psi and nowadays it's around 19 psi. So we have uh, that problem that the ground pressure is going up and going up more and more. So we have to ask ourselves what is stronger now? Is it still the soil or is it machinery? So, uh, what can I say from all these trials I have done in all these years of research? We can say that tire pressure mainly has an influence on the topsoil stress, so let's say on the top 10 inches. But still the load has an influence on the subsoil. So we can have tracks, big tires at low pressure, but if we increase wheel load, we will increase subsoil pressure. Now, um, I would like to make some recommendations. I will start with the soil. The better structure we have in soil, the higher strength we have. So we know from studies, if we do minimum tillage, we have much stronger soils than if we do conventional. So the healthy soils have always been the soils with high organic matter and this should increase with clay content. So as another rule of thumb, to summarize up, we can say the ratio between humus and clay should be 20% or 1 to 5. 
So, as an example, if we have 20% clay, that's maybe about that what we, hear, what we have here on this farm, we should have 4% of fuels. Then we have good, strong soil. What can we do now on the machinery side? I mentioned already the high volume tires. So, my opinion is, in the fields, the target pressure should be below 15 psi. And then we should distribute uh, the loads of our machinery on as many tires as possible and avoid wheel loads more than 5 tons. And we uh, provide a decision support tool online, it's for free. So you can calculate uh, the compaction risk for your own machinery for free on our uh, website. The model is called Terranimo. The main aim was that farmers themselves should be able to evaluate uh, the risks. They should have uh, decision support which reload they, they can go, which inflation pressure they can have and which tires they should buy if uh, it's going to new investments. Thanks for your attention and we'll see us again out in the field checking all this machinery. So thank you, see you later.